This is the Average to Savage podcast with Paul Garino. Everyone and anyone, athletes, celebs, and much more. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Average Savage podcast. Our special guest today is Idris Virgo. Idris, how's it going? Salman, Salman. Just tired, man. It was a fought last weekend. Now I'm already back in the gym already. Full week back in the gym, so it's a bit crazy. Knackered. There you go. You gotta, you gotta uh, still always stay ready. You never know, especially with this misfits uh, boxing. You know, people pull out, people get injured, so you never know. Might call you. Um, <clears throat> let's just go back a little bit. Like, uh, how how did you first get started in boxing? Um, I would say it was a more of like a fluke. I started off doing kickboxing first, and then um, I got introduced to boxing from my pal. My pal introduced me to boxing, and then from there, I just loved the sport. But um, I had to pick either one work, work full time in the railway or box full time or box full time. So um, I was lucky enough to go on Love Island, and that just changed the whole domestic of um, where my path was lying. Like from doing Love Island, I was able to just focus more onto my boxing and then be that influencer um, slash boxer after Love Island. So it was great. And what about like growing up? Did you play any other sports? Yeah, I'll be honest with you, I was good at football. Um, I wish I'd stick to it, to be honest with you, because that's a team sport. Boxing is a loaded sport. But um, I literally got signed with um, Blues. But then, basically what happened was I got tackled by a geezer, and then I got angry, and I was ready to, ready to fight him. So, I think boxing and fighting was already in my blood, because I got tackled, and I got so pissed off. And the scout said, you just, just blew your chance to get literally scouted for Blues, like, we can't accept this in the academy and X, Y, Z. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that was my football dream, just down the drain. And what, and explain to me, what do you mean by the, like, Blues? Um, Birmingham City Football Club. Yeah, in, yeah, in England. So, um, I think they're in a Champions League now. I think they got kicked out of the Premier League. But um, at that time, you know, I think I was in the Premier League, so it was quite decent to do, man. It was, I would have been in a lot of money. But, um, yeah, I couldn't control my anger. Yeah, for sure. And then, um, I guess, what what was your amateur background like in boxing? Um, I don't really want to talk. <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't really have a big amateur background, to be honest with you. It wasn't that big. I learned a few white colors, a few amateurs. So, um, I'm like I'm like a novice to the sport, just like these um, influencers. You know what I mean? I'm gaining my experience through my matches, but I do believe I'm one of the top um pound for pound guys in influencers so um yeah yeah for sure Is there, so i guess when you when you did turn uh pro in traditional boxing like <clears throat> were you like nervous or anything um butterflies yeah for my first fight i bought a fly second fight it was my second fight was it was good in a sense of because after because i knew i was Going to go and potentially go on Love Island. My second fight, I wasn't really thinking about the fight. I was just thinking about tomorrow. I got a call with Love Island, and I should be going on TV. So I wasn't. I was focusing the fight, but I was just being cautious. But I enjoyed the fight. Um, yeah, I'm just used to it now. You know, what I mean, I'm just I'm 15 fights deep. It's just, I'm just used to it now. I'm just like I'm used to it, man. I'm used to it. <clears throat> yeah. And then and then tell me about how you, how you got into reality TV. Like, how did you get casted for Love Island? Um, I was watching Love Island season. I think I watched like two seasons of it, but at this time I was watching it, and I, my sister gave me a book called The Secret. So um, I was reading The Secret, and then obviously watching, sorry, re- watching Love Island, reading The Secret, fell asleep, and then I woke up in the middle of the night, and my body and my soul and my mind just said apply for Love Island. But at that time I didn't want to apply. I was thinking, why am I waking up in the middle of the night applying for Love Island? It doesn't make no sense. So I went, on the, I went on the application form, filled it out. But when I mean filled it out, I didn't give two craps while I was filling out. I just put anything in there. Um, then the next morning of my fight night, I got the phone call from um, Love Island saying, congratulations, you've been fast-tracked. Um, we need to have a call with you. So um, just from there, man, it's just changed my life. That one scenario of me waking up in the middle of the night, listening to my mind to apply for Love Island just changed my whole career. It's crazy. Yeah, and then... Uh, you mentioned the secret. Like, is it the book, the secret about like positive stuff and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the book, the secret about manifesting stuff and being into positive. So, 
it worked, man. Like, it's crazy that you think something like that works, but it was just mad how I was watching Nova, and then the next day, I got a phone call from ITV. I was like, whoa, what is going on? That was just crazy. Yeah, no, even uh, <clears throat> sometimes when, I, when I'm feeling down, I put on The Secret, the show, the movie or whatever, and I just I just let it play while I'm sleeping, so it, like, comes into my brain while I'm sleeping. Yeah, it's good. I feel, yeah, I got the audiobook as well, to be honest. I do that as well. Yeah, that's dope. Um, and then, yeah, so you're saying Love Island changed your life. I guess, like, what what was your following at, like, before Love Island and then after Love Island? Before Love Island, was, I, got, I was getting a bit of following through my boxing. Not a lot, but I had um, 7,000 7, followers. Then after the Love Island, it jumped up to about 27, I think it was. And then when... So a week after when I was out, it jumped up another about freaking out. It tripled. It was just going up. It was getting to about this eighties to hundred k. And then after that, I went. I went to the challenge. And then when I went, went out to the challenge, but following up again on the challenge, and it also went up on Twitter. Twitter was not really active then, but my Twitter fan base is more of the challenge. Um, and then I done. What catfish, secret crush, and then just constantly my followers just going up. Fighting a mitzvah now, my followers going up even more. I'm getting more of the clout I needed to fight these big names. So after headlining um, in Newcastle, I'm kind of there now. I'm on the AT vibe. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, tell me about like reality TV. Like, tell me something like most people don't know about reality TV. Um. It's real. It's really real. <laughs> it's actually kind of real. It's it's real. You just you just gotta make good TV. I mean, you just gotta make it entertaining. It's just like where you watch EastEnders or Carbonation Street. That's in the UK programs or Harley Oaks or the Suits for the American people. Um, oh, that's that's more that that one said that's reality TV. But um, you just gotta make good TV. You just gotta make things where people want to tune in and um, watch you. You know what I mean? You can't be boring like um. A fly on the wall. You've got to be entertaining. Yeah. So you and en- you enjoy going on all those shows. Oh, I love it. I love being in front of the camera. I, I just love it. Yeah. I've got so used to being in front of the camera. It's like the, if the camera's not on, I'm not. I'm just chilling. You know what I mean? But when there's a camera on, I'm like, I've got more. I've got more energy. It's, it's, it's weird. It's crazy. And then is is like one of your goals to like be in movies? Yeah, man. I want to be a household name. Um, I love to be in Creed, man. I want to be in Creed, man. I want to be in Creed. I got a vision. I'll, I'll play a good part in Creed, and hopefully they contact me probably next year if they are doing a Creed, probably four, isn't it? Yeah, four. Yeah. yeah if they do another Creed, then yo, sign me up, man. I love to freaking play a part in that. Yeah, that'd be dope. Um, and then yeah, tell me, tell me how you got into Misfits. I, I believe you and you and At just always, or you were calling them out. And then he was, was like down, and then that all happened, right? Yeah, man. So um. It was just crazy because my following, following and that, is, it was big enough to go into Mitzvahs. I, I had the influence and side of things as well, but no one really wanted to fight me because of my pro record. Um, but AT, fair plays AT, opened it, he opened the gate for me and um, I fought, fought AT. And then, don't get me wrong, people are still kind of afraid to fight me, but at the same time, people are willing to take that challenge. They're really they're willing to sign a contract to face their fears. So um, I'm just grateful to be in this scene. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that what's getting good is that everyone, I think, like, most of the influencers are, are getting better. And now, as you've seen, like, after Anthony beat Saul Poppy, now people are calling him out. So it's like, I think it's I think it's just going to get where they're going to start calling you out eventually now, too. The way is, the influence of boxing I see as being old school boxing because in the influence of boxing, no one cares about if they lose, you know what I mean? In pro boxing, it's too much. You gotta protect your own. In influence boxing, like if you lose, or you got you got another two big fights, three fights ahead of you, it's not the end of you. You know what I mean? You keep on going. So people just go into fights thinking, you no, know, if I do lose, I'm fine. Like Aaron when I fought him in the weekend, like he he's 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 got potential in his um in his crossover space, in influence space, hundred percent. Yeah, that, that's why I think it's really cool too. Like that's what I, that's one thing I really like about it is like you know the, everyone you, like you could lose and come back. Like it doesn't matter. Like in boxing, yeah, it's way too serious, and they they've been talking about it about Floyd like kind of making that the thing, which kind of hurts even uh, traditional pro boxers. Just like that, 
like it shouldn't be that devastating if you have one loss. Yeah, you got do what, let's be honest, we all got blame on Floyd. Floyd started this pros coming to see exhibitions and doing influence thing because before no one was thinking about it. And then Floyd again he started at a zero and no fifty and 50 no. So you really you gotta blame Floyd for both parts, really. You know what I mean? So um yeah. And what do what do you think it would take to to get that exhibition with Floyd? Ah, uh, I don't know, man. Um, because right be, before he fought Andrew Chalmers, it was another. It was like a random guy. It was like I feel like he was like a kickboxer. Oh, Gotti. He was meant to fight me, you know. You? <laughs> but he flapped it. Yeah, he flapped. He flapped it. <laughs> you were really supposed to fight Floyd. Hmm. You were. Not Floyd, no, got that Gotti guy. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, that's the main. He floated that Gotti, but then that that commotion happened in the ring was a bit weird. But, um, I don't know, I don't know, Floyd. Ugh. Hopefully, Floyd's in my last performance, and he's like, okay, I'll give, I'll, I'll go have him. But I don't think he, his team will probably say, nah, it's too risky for you, because Floyd, Floyd's about what fifty or something. I think he's like forty-five. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 I've got age on my youth on my side. Him, I don't know. Just, let's just imagine this. Not even imagine it. If I did fly, fight Floyd, I'd knock him out, and that's the end of his legacy. It's not worth all the money in the world for him to end his legacy. So I don't think he'll take it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, what I was saying, there was some guy I forgot who it was that that was supposed to fight him before Aaron Chalmers. That he got injured and then pulled out. Um, but I forgot what his name was. But yeah. But you were talking about John Gotti, so you told me you just said you were supposed to fight John Gotti. Yeah, yeah, I was meant to. I was meant to fight John Gotti, but it's his, uh, his team didn't want it. It's just his team didn't want it. So fair play to him, though. He, he hung now, and that, then he in any fought Floyd. So that's a win. That's a win-win for him. You know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, so let's talk about your your last fight. It was a couple weeks ago now um, versus Aaron Chalmers. Uh, I think it was dope that you got, that was your first main event and like, how, how did that, well, one, how did that feel to get your first main event? I was in the main event in when I done white color. So it's not in the same, say scale, but it was crazy, man. It was just crazy. The whole event was around myself. It was just, it felt good, man. And I didn't make it get to my head. You know what I mean? I still like treat everyone with respect. I still like, you know what I'm trying to say? Some people might get that main event, get to their head and try to take the piece out of production. But, um, yeah, man, it was just crazy, man. It was just felt like a movie, and I was saying to my arms and Harry and that, the guy who's in my corner, saying, this is like a movie, man. We're just going to do one night, and then we're done, and it's back to normal tomorrow. So um, I was kinda, it was kind of depressing because I didn't want it to end. But um, it was just great, man, and I can't wait to do more, man. I just, I just can't wait. I want to keep on headlining, you know, main event, you know, at least be cold main event. I don't mind, man. I just want to keep on going, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. And then, um, like, how how did you rate your performance? I was a six, six and a half. Six, six and six and a half, yeah. Uh, after the fight, I wasn't really happy. I, I needed to watch it back. I always criticised myself, even when I fought 80. I still felt like a dumb bed. Um, but, yeah, first round was risk, was too was too close. Not to say too close to counter, but it was, just, it was a weird first round. You know what I mean? But then I pulled it through and I... Stopped him in the third, and I did say to people it's going to be the first or the third round, and I also did say it was going to be a spectacular performance. So I kept up to my words, you know what I mean? I'm like a Muhammad Ali man. What I predict will come true. When you when you knock him out in the third round, did you did that click in your head that you said that? Um. Yeah. 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 Kind of. Yeah. No, it clicked in my head after when I watched it back in a sense, because I could have got him out there in a second. Really, I could have got him out in a second when he when I hit him to the body, he got back up, and I was pounding his body, and I threw right hand. Really, if I timed it right, I could have got him again, and he could have went out of there, but it was just weird how he played out to the third. So, as I said, again, the secret, eh? <laughs> was, he, uh, was he as expected, or like was he tougher than you thought? No, I thought he way tougher than I thought. Way tougher than I thought. Like, yeah. They had a good game plan. I wouldn't say they had a good game plan because the game plan failed. But they tried to do their game plan. Um, but it was tougher, tougher than that, tougher than I expected. But I did say to him, I did say to him as well in the press conference, I said, mate, the only way you will survive 
if you run or clinch, there's no way you're going to be able to stand there toe to toe, take my punches or take my power. And he was constantly saying I got pillow fists, and he found out on um on on that Saturday like I ain't got pillow fists, you know what I mean? Uh, not taking no respect from Aaron, um, great opponent, and as I said before, he's gonna have loads of loads of opportunities in this space, hundred percent. And again, I did say to him, I'll, I'll run it back for a fair way retirement fight, you know what I mean? Um, but I still think it'll be the same result, but yeah, but earlier. I want I want Mayweather one, Carl Foch, but then one guy, really, two guys I really want next will be Levan Bell, the coverage, the Cowley dog, and also Chris Alviri, the water boy. Either one of them, if we could find the next Mitsubishi fight, I'll, I'll fight either one of them because I don't know what it's about. That, um, Levan Bell, I don't know what it's about him. He just seems too cocky when, when he put tweets about our oh, Mitsubishi and not putting him on the prime card, boring fights. I'm like, mate, okay, cool. You're talking all this rubbish. Step up then. Let's see if you're ready to step up. And he can't moan about his weight because he said to AT, I'll get down to 175 if I have notice. I'm giving him notice now. Get himself in the gym and let's make 175. Yeah. He, even like, um, I mean, he fought Uriah Hall, um, you know, who's a big UFC guy. So it's like, why wouldn't he fight you? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know what I mean, he wants to fight. He's moaning. I'm ready to step in the ring, but I just don't get why he only wants to reply to my tweet once in a while. Like, does he really want to fight? When he's when he was fight freaking going back and forth with AT, he was quick in a response. You know what I mean? Because he thinks he can have AT, but AT is a good opponent, and I do believe in October the fourth. If AT is going to knock out King Ken, Princess Kenny, hundred <laughs> percent. Or would you would you fight Le'Veon Bell at one eighty five? I'll fight him at one eighty. The most I'll go is what, yeah, most I'll go will be 180. That's just pushing it. What? I think he, he could get to 180. But I know he could get to 175 because they said to AT I could get to 175. You know what I mean? Ideally, I would like him at 175. But if if he's struggling to get to what, um, 175, I'll fight him at 180. But um, he, needs, he, he needs to let me know if he wants to fight or not so we could get it on. Yeah, for sure. And Chris Avila, I think that one's um, more realistic. Oh, I need to beat that water boy up, man. You know what I mean? He had a golden boy freaking pull. So then I want to beat him up into next Tuesday. And I guarantee you, he won't go more than two rounds. I'll beat that water boy up. You know what I mean? And after I'll go for Nate Diaz. I definitely want to see the fight, but I can't wait to see the press conference on that one too. Yeah, man. He, oh, I, I don't know why it is with that geezer. I just don't like the guy. I don't know why it is. I just don't like anything about him. I, after the fight, I don't think I'll be cool with him. He's <laughs> too cocky, man. I don't like him. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, yeah, no, I'm excited to see what happens next for you. Um, <clears throat> all right, you ready? Uh, all right, actually, you want to give me some predictions for the prime card? All right, who you got in uh, Chase Demore versus Tempo? Chase. Yeah, it's got to be Chase. All right, what about w- Wenderson Nunez versus my mate Nate? Wenderson Nunez, that Wenderson Nunez. All right, and then you already said Ken, King Kenny versus AT. Uh, what about Dean Dean versus Wally too? Dean, 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 Dean. What about who? Who do you got in the tag team match? It's uh, uh, Nick LMFAO or and uh, Alex Wasabi versus B Dave and Pineda. I gotta say B Dave Pineda because Pineda, his last tag team, he came out like a machine, and he was freaking eight hands ago. So B Dave Pineda. All right, and <clears throat> the two big ones, Logan Paul, Dylan Danis. If Dean Danis shows up, i got to say Logan Paul because I know he's got an anger and frustration for what he's been saying about his bird. So I've got to go for Logan Paul. Yeah, Logan Paul. Yeah, the, yeah, the, like the way I, – I just can't – I just don't – I have no idea what to expect. Like, like I feel like is Logan Paul just going to come out swinging and like he could potentially make a mistake? Like what's – like I don't, or is he going to be calm and just box him and just beat him up? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, then KSI versus Tommy Fury. It just got – it just got uh, bumped up to a pro sanction fight. Oh, that's actually a pro fight? Yeah. I'll say, I already know KSI because that's gone to a pro fight. I'm telling you now, and now again, KSI is going to knock him out. I think the pressure for Tommy to know the pro fight will get to him a bit because before he probably thinking, oh, 
it's not going to go on my record on cool. Now he knows there's a pro fight, he's going to be, oh, crap. I've be, got to be careful. I've got to be cautious now. So, um, KSI. Yeah, for sure. And I know you train with him, and I know everyone says he has power. So, and I think I think you tweeted it too. But uh, yeah, what is it like training with him? A nightmare. He lives up to his name. Um, he's got some mad power. I've been sparring a lot of people, world champions, and the hardest person he's hit me in sparring. That's I'll say, is KSI. It's crazy, but I just don't know how he does it. He's like. Um, He's definitely like a Dragon Ball Z character. He, he gets some form of power and he just hits you. Um, and he pushes, you know what I mean? He, he doesn't slack in training. Every training session he goes to, he's 110%. He doesn't moan. He just freaking goes for it. And he pushes myself. And he pushes anyone around him, man. He's crazy. A YouTuber, people call him. A music artist. An actor, whatever they want to say. That's turned into a freaking legit, hardcore freaking boxer, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, no, it is crazy. Um, all right, ready for a couple more fun questions? Yeah. All right, what's your what's your favorite cheat meal? What did you have after the fight? I had some donuts. Yeah, some donuts. Um, probably say five guys. Five guys. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, do you have a favorite uh football club? Not really. It depends whatever team's supporting me. You know what I mean? If they're supporting me, I'm supporting them. <laughs> gotcha. Um, what about, like, where would one place be? If I went to your hometown, like, what, what would be a place I'd have to go check out to get something to eat? <laughs> um, do you know what? I don't even know. That's how you know a guy's been on a diet for the rest of his whole entire life. I do not bloody know. I'll probably just go, go KFC. <laughs> or Nando's. Or Nando's. Like... <laughs> I've been on a doubt for so long, man. I don't even know, man. <laughs> right, last one. What What is something people don't know about you? I could sing in the shower. Um, I'm a good rapper. Um, high type my mistake coming out soon. This trap for freaking Devon, the Koji Kali Doug Bow. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm a, I'm a chilled guy, man. People don't know I'm a chilled guy, and I do like to read books here and there. So I'm a chilled guy. You read books? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right, Idris. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And uh, could you let the listeners know where they can follow you at? Yeah, people. Um, if, you, if you're one of my fans or you hate me or you don't hate me or you love me, um, all you got to do is follow me on Instagram, Idris Virgo, Twitter, Idris Virgo, Snapchat, Idris Virgo, TikTok, Idris Virgo. But the only one that's different on YouTube is I am Idris Virgo. But all my handles are all, my, all the same name. But yeah, man, love and support to everyone who's listening to this podcast.